powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. More than 20 people are dead in eastern Alabama after a deadly tornado passed through yesterday. I'm Laura Podesta. I'll tell you why search and rescue teams fear that number could rise today. Ten years ago was a cold and snowy day in Bozeman, not unlike a lot of the days we've been seeing lately. I'm John Shear, and coming up, how a day that started like so many others was about to become the biggest disaster in Bozeman's history. Wow. Part one of a four-part series we have, uh, looking back at the 10-year uh, anniversary of the explosion yeah, in downtown Bozeman. John Shear uh, handling that aptly. I cannot wait to see what he has done with all of that. He has been working around oh the clock gosh, to get these It's been fantastic. Uh, Matt uh, Burr to the dangerous level. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I don't know how to tell people to yeah. stay inside and bring your pets inside other than repeat it so many right. times. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sorry to sound like a broken record and, and speaking of broken records, several of them going. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure uh, temperatures true. 30 below. <laughs> By the way, uh, 46 below was the coldest temperature at Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport back in 1983 Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Where are we at We're, now? We're at 30 below, oh, so we're close. Yeah, we got some we got some run to make. Uh, temperature wise, look at this: 50 below at uh, in Livingston. That's the wind chill. Uh, so be aware, we do have extreme cold warnings. We have wind chill advisories, and our temperature's not warming up a whole lot. In fact, our our camera I think is frozen on the MSU uh, campus this morning. You can see uh, conditions are going to be extreme. We'll talk more about um, what you can expect coming up in a few minutes. I'd personally rather not break the record at the, <laughs> some at the airport if some, we could. Some records just, should just be left yeah, alone. Let's just yeah, just leave you. that alone. I'm kind of with you there. Uh, but let's stay on topic here. Due to this morning's extremely cold temperatures, classes around the state are being delayed this morning. Yeah, here's our list. It's also available on the crawl. All of Bozeman Belgrade schools, Whitehall High School, Gallatin Gateway School will be starting, starting two hours late today. Superintendent sent out emails this morning saying buses will also be running two hours behind schedule. Now, even though there will be delays in the morning, the schools say the afternoon dismissal after, after school bus times will not change. School is flat out canceled at Manhattan Christian today. Manhattan Public Schools are opening two hours late today as well. Three Forks buses are not running today. But school is open for parents who wish to drop off and pick up their children at normal school times. Again, no buses, a.m. or p.m. in Three Forks. Butte and Anaconda schools are open as usual today. And Butte Silver Bowl and Gallatin County law enforcement are asking citizens to be prepared when going outside during this very cold snap. Officials say it is always good to plan for, extra, for some extra time to get your gas tank filled. They say to wear the coat, wear your hat, your gloves, your extra layers, avoid frostbite. Make sure that your home vents and heating units are clear of snow. And if your fire hydrant is covered, dig it out in case of an emergency. Yeah, we threw a couple extra car uh, coats in the, or uh, blankets in the car. Just smart. to do right now in case you go off so the road. So smart. It doesn't take long, so be yeah. careful with all of that. That's right. We're going to stay on weather, but we're going to shift uh, gears uh, to another part of the country. At least 23 people dead in eastern Alabama after a deadly tornado crushed parts of Lee County. The storm system also stretched into Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina. CBS's Laura Podesta has our latest. A deadly tornado raged through Lee County, Alabama on Sunday. There's damage. Serious damage. The town of Beauregard took a direct hit. Houses completely destroyed. Uh, homes that just basically just slabs left where one stood a home. Specific areas, the, the contents of one residence. Uh, we know for a fact it was located over a thousand yards away. Residents say it looks like a war zone. Not good at all. Y'all just pray for it. Pray real for it. They don't lie. You hear a freight train, you better be in a safe place. In nearby Smith Station, Alabama, David McBride was in his truck just outside the bar he owns when the storm hit. I seen the trash swirling in the air across the hill over there, and I said, oh no, this ain't good. Surveillance video shows the moment a tree flew into the gas station next door where Charlie Patel was working. I'm scared, thus I'm on the counter and 10 seconds in the tornado come and everything is gone, everything destroyed. It is a monster. A number of tornadoes or suspected tornadoes ripped across central Georgia. One leveled an entire neighborhood in Talbotton. Another hit Ellerslie. Everything oh. that's been built for 19 years. Gone. gone. <laughs> in the blink of an eye. 
The powerful storm system also reached the Florida Panhandle and South Carolina. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Teams will be back out this morning in Lee County, Alabama. Officials fear that the death toll may rise as they reach more of those areas. 635 back here in the Treasure State. More details have been released about a man in Gray Falls who is facing aggravated burglary and kidnapping charges from an incident Saturday morning. Law enforcement uh, say officers went to a home on 10th Street North around 630 in the morning. They found Gerald Anderson and a victim in a minivan outside an apartment. A victim and witnesses say Anderson forced himself into the apartment and told them that he would be killed or injured if they tried to get away. A woman then said Anderson put a sharp weapon to her to her throat and forced himself on her. Anderson is facing six felony charges, two misdemeanors. And today the Bozeman School Board could consider changing the name that they did choose for the second high school. That's right. At last week's meeting, the board had narrowed the name options to three. Bozeman Spanish Peaks High School, Bozeman West Slope High School, and Bozeman Storm Castle High School. After long discussion, the board members all voted in favor of West Slope. It's a name that honors the state's fish. Now, once the announcement was made, many people in the community voiced their concern. Because of that, the board will revisit all three names today during a special meeting being held at noon. And tomorrow marks the 10th anniversary of the worst disaster to strike downtown Bozeman. A gas explosion rocked the 200 block of Main Street, claiming a life, flattening three buildings, and rendering four others unsafe. TN's John Shear reports the calamity came with no warning. By 8.15 on Thursday morning, March 5th, 2009, downtown Bozeman looked like this. But no one had any idea a catastrophe like this was looming. I was getting ready to go to work. That morning was just an ordinary morning for us. Steve White was chairman of the Gallatin County Commission. And we were getting ready to start a office meeting. Lots of meetings were about to get underway. We had a crew that was working out of our Three Forks shop and I was out there for a safety meeting that morning. Um, driving into work actually uh, with the city manager. Kids like Chris Nauman's young son were heading to school. Got him out the door and he was off walking to Irving. It was a day kids could love. It was a very snowy day that day. It affected everyone. <laughs> And we were out shoveling snow. Everybody had a slow start that day. A slow start that in time would prove to be life-saving. In the Law and Justice Center, we felt the blast as, as many people did around Bozeman. Even after the blast, most people were struggling to comprehend what was happening. As I was what, coming over the hill by the uh, hospital, saw that big plume of smoke. Len Albright was trying to get his bearings. Hmm. That looks like it might be downtown. Just west of the blast, Steve White had an incredibly unique vantage point. I just happened to be looking straight out the, the windows just at the time of the explosion. White didn't know what he was seeing. I thought maybe it was uh, something with a propane tank at the new uh, parking lot that they were building. Over at the fire station on 19th, Graver Johnson was also confused. It didn't come over our radios or our pagers. A fire captain downtown heard the blast and made a phone call. And said, hey, we have some type of blast. You want to start heading this way. Johnson and his crew were here on Main Street, heading to Bozeman's biggest disaster ever, with little information and no idea what was ahead. And I remember turning on Main Street um, and heading down. About then, Graver begins to understand what's going on. The smoke rising and everything, and that's when we were trying to put it all together. Life had changed forever in downtown Bozeman. I'm John Shearer on Main Street for MTN News. Now tomorrow we learn what people saw, heard, and experienced in the minutes and hours after that huge explosion ripped through the heart of Bozeman's downtown. This is actually kind of a, a really neat little time to look back because John's going to break it up into these different sections Absolutely. over the next few days. So be sure to All week tune long in. right here on Montana this morning exclusively, by the way. Absolutely. And I think it's so, it's so neat to be able to look back on yeah. all that. In other news, this week under the big sky, exactly 10 years after Megan Fisher was told she would never walk again, she found herself joining the U.S. 2012 Paralympic Games in London. This was the culmination of a long-held dream and the result of what Megan describes as a certain amount of grit. Under the Big Sky is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Vein Clinic and Markovich Real Estate. I always wanted to be on Team USA. Like I always wanted to go to the Olympics. 
I was selected for the 2012 games team. I ended up moving to the Colorado Springs Training Center. I was working full-time as a PT student. I was training full-time, I was working full-time. I actually took a break in the middle of my clinical to go to London and race. It was amazing. I've been racing kind of head-to-head -head with this Australian woman who's very nice, but when it comes to racing, I have to think she's a horrible person <laughs> at the time, and I wanted to beat her. All the times came in, and I was still at the top of the board. It's just, it's surreal, it's awesome. Rio was the next games. I wasn't ready for that train to end. I was able to win a bronze medal in one of the hardest races of my life. I was up against this very talented New Zealand cyclist. She was beating me by like three seconds at one point. In the last 500 meters is when I won the race. I just think that fire in my belly, that, that stubbornness, that grit, that's where that showed. I'm incredibly proud of that bronze medal. I was able to then go into the time trial where I was up against my teammate. She ended up winning gold, and so there was a U.S. athlete on the top step, and I was on the second step. It was great like to see her succeed, to come in second, still hear our song. You want to hear the Star Spangled Banner at those games as often as you can. I ended Rio very pleased with my performance, and I retired from the national team after that. To stand up there and represent my team, my country, my family, it was everything. So cool. Yes. Megan Fisher, so cool. a physical therapist in Missoula, continues to explore athletic pursuits. Now, for more stories, visit underthebigsky.com, or you can follow that all on Facebook as well. She's incredible. She's I love, so cool. I love what she said about the competition. She's a very nice lady from Australia, but I got to think that she's, she's just a terrible person. person. <laughs> I love that. Competitive we, edge. You have to have That's it. That's for sure. We do have to take a quick break. Stay with us in just a moment. We're going to take a look at President Trump's response to the Michael Cohen testimony. But first, we're going to check in with Bianca Goladriga to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS this morning. Good morning. Ahead on CBS this morning, we're in Alabama after a deadly tornado outbreak kills at least 23 people. More severe weather is extending across the southeast. Alabama Senator Doug Jones joins us. Plus, today is the debut of our new series, The World of Mothers. We'll look at what it's like to be a mom across the globe, starting with why the U.S. is the only developed country without national paid parental leave. We'll see you at 7.